Howdy folks, Flair here, and I've just got a quick one for you. I just got something over Facebook from a friend of mine, a report from Rankin County in Mississippi about a reaction from the locals to a planned protest by Fred Phelps and his gang of yet another military funeral. Apparently the Phelps gang was going to come out and protest this funeral, and according to the article, the citizens of the county made things very inconvenient for the Phelps gang by doing things such as blockading their cars at the local motel, I guess they beat somebody up, so on and so forth. This is what the article says. Now, there are a lot of comments to this post, and it's really the comments that I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to link you to a few things in the below bar, and I'm going to try to put these all together, and I want you to try to kind of follow along with me here as I try to paint this picture, because there's something about which I'm a little bit confused, and I have to be honest about it. See, it's one of those things that it's possible to apply to each and every one of us in any group or uh, any sort of social or cultural identity to which any of us might subscribe. There's this problem of what do you do with the outliers, with the extremists. This is a problem everywhere. It's a problem for Muslims, for Christians, for Jews, for anybody. It's even a problem for atheists. Let me go ahead and lead into it, and I'm going to quote from some of these comments here. Those of you who are saying that Phelps and WBC's actions are because they are Christians first and foremost, or that their actions are due to the teachings of God, Jesus, or the Holy Bible, need to learn a thing or two about Christianity before you open your mouths. And he goes on to say, Anyone can commit an atrocity in the name of anything, but that does not mean that the group, organization, belief system that they claim actually supports them in any way. Have you ever heard of a denomination of Christian churches standing up in support of what these whack jobs do? No, because they don't have any support from Christians, because they do not reflect anything that Christianity teaches or represents, because their actions fly in the face of Jesus' teachings and the Word of God as a whole. And I think that this is very interesting. So what this person is saying is that what the Phelps gang is doing is not actually representative of Christianity. And in support of this, he cites as evidence that no other Christian groups come out and support what the Phelps are doing. He then goes on to say, very smugly, Thank you. Your statements of apology and admissions of ignorance and bias are welcome at any time. <laughs> okay. So, what do you do with that statement? Well, I guess this is the question that I have as a part of this video. I don't really know what you do with that statement. You see, it's all fine and well to say that the Phelps gang doesn't represent Christianity and are not represented by Christianity and to cite as evidence that no other Christian groups stand up in support of them, but let's face it, we know in particular with Christianity that there are a lot of disagreements amongst the different Christian sects and we know that there are over 33,000 different denominations of Christianity. This means that at some point there have been at least 33,000 disagreements over how Christianity should be interpreted. How can any one person, smugly or otherwise, come out and say that the Phelps gang does or does not really represent what Jesus' teachings were? I would like to know what people who genuinely believe in Christianity feel and think about this topic. What do you do with the extremists? What do you do with the outliers? In a lot of cases, it seems that people try to effectively disown them. Okay, that's certainly one tactic, but that doesn't make them go away, and they still claim membership amongst your ranks. They still claim to be a part of you, and they claim, even worse perhaps, that you're a part of them. They claim you among their number. How do you make that work? How do you reconcile that within yourselves? Another very similar comment, this one significantly more humble, says, I would just like to say that the Westboro Baptists are not Christians. They claim to be, but they are not. They have twisted the Bible and taken things out of context and made it something sickening. Please don't let them taint your view of all Christians. That comment to me actually does seem quite humble, and it seems like pretty much the only thing that people in that position can do in order to defend themselves against those outliers, against those extremists. What else could that person say other than, those people are extreme, please don't judge us in the same way that you judge them. We are not like them. But yet still, they say they are like you. 
This draws back to the No True Scotsman argument, which I'm going to link down in the below bar as well, the Wikipedia article for the No True Scotsman fallacy. The No True Scotsman fallacy, for those of you who are not aware, is just that fallacy that takes the form, all Scotsmen love oatmeal, says person A. Person B responds, well, my father is a Scotsman and he doesn't love oatmeal. Person A then says, well, all true Scotsmen love oatmeal. That's the no true Scotsman argument in a nutshell. And that's what people are saying about Fred Phelps. They say, well, no true Christian practices those things that the Phelps gang practices. It's fallacious, isn't it? Or is it? You tell me. In response specifically to the claim that the Westboro Baptist Church is not truly Christian, I am going to quote from the Westboro Baptist Church About page. This is, and I will link in the below bar, this is from their fact, and the question that they're answering here is, didn't Jesus die for everyone? Their answer is no. Jesus died only for his sheep, John 10, his church, Ephesians 5.25, his elect, 1 Peter 1.2, if he died for everyone, everyone would go to heaven. All sins of all people would be forgiven, but obviously all sins aren't forgiven because people are burning in hell. So what they're saying here, first and foremost, is that they believe that only the elect go to heaven. They're a Calvinist sect. That's what Calvinists believe, is that only the elect get to go to heaven. Calvinism is a recognized branch of Christianity. Because they're saying this, the corollary to that is that they are, in fact, claiming to be Christians. They're not disclaiming Christianity. They're not simply espousing hate for hate's sake without also taking on the trappings of the religion, you see. So they're claiming to be Christians. And that claim is as valid as any other claim. If there are 33,000 recognized denominations of Christianity in the world today, then the Westboro Baptist Church has just as valid a claim to being one of them as any other. Tell me why that's not the case. Make a good argument. Do your best. Unfortunately, I think that Christianity may just have to learn to accept its extremists and outliers. That's all from me for tonight. Take care out there, folks. Good luck.